Happy Monday Knitters! I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and welcome back to my channel. I am here every Monday showing you yarn for two brand new starts this week. I have a finished dishcloth to show you, I have some sweater progress to show you, and I have progress on a few other um, starts from weeks past. So let's jump right in. As always, a brand new dishcloth. So if you are just joining me for the first time this week, thank you so much for stopping by to take a look at what I am working on this week. And if you are one of the regular viewers, thank you again for coming back and for all of your great comments. I love chatting with you. So this is the dishcloth I finished for this week. Last week, I had it started and I just had the first eight rows done. Really not enough to really get a good look at what the pattern was gonna turn it like. The more I worked on this, the more I loved this stitch. It is a garter slip stitch. It gives you really nice texture. You can see the texture there and it has like, it's almost like it has a striped look to it. The edges lie nice and flat. There's no curling. And even though it's not reversible, this is a nice slip stitch on the reverse side. So I think either side is nice. So I think this would make, you know, a nice scarf pattern, a nice sweater pattern, and it makes a perfect dishcloth pattern. The texture will give you a little bit of scrubbing power if you're washing dishes with it. So it's an eight, an eight row repeat. And even though it's eight rows, really the pattern is only four rows. It's just you're taking those four rows and you're repeating them twice and offsetting the stitch pattern. But it is easy. It is easy to memorize. You don't need to have the pattern with you. Once, once you've um, gone through a couple repeats, it's easy enough to see if you're on the right side, the wrong side. Um, there's no purling. It is just garter stitch with some slip stitches. And this is the texture you get. It is is lovely. So I would love for you to um, go grab it off Ravelry and leave me a comment below if you want to knit along with me this week. If this is if this might be a pattern you might want to knit for yourself or knit it as a gift. So it is on Ravelry as the Garter Slip Dishcloth. It is a free download, so you can add it into your your library and maybe think about it for yourself or do some Christmas knitting. Anyways, it's lovely. It's one that I will be knitting again. What else have I finished? Okay, let, now this is not a finished finish, but it is sock number one, and I Kitchener stitched the toe. I think when I showed this to you last week, I had just done the toe decreases, and it was just waiting for Kitchener stitching. So Kitchener stitching or grafting, those two terms are interchangeable. And what that means is that you're going to just cut your working yarn, leave, leave you know, a, a little bit, a, not that much yarn. I don't know how much. Leave a good length because you don't want to run short. Cut it off, put it on a darning needle, and then you just work. There's a specific way you pick up your stitches with the darning needle, and it recreates one more row of knit stitches. And it closes off the end of your toe. It also works on the tip of mitts. And there's no ridges on either side, inside or the outside. So it's a fantastic way. It's not that tricky. It just takes, does take, you got to do it a few times to, to get the rhythm of it. But it gives you a really nice finish on the toe of your sock. So sock number one is totally done. Ends are all wove in. So then that freed up my needles so I could cast on sock number two. I'm loving these little short, I think these little short five inch DPNs. Love these short ones. I have always been a double pointed sock knitting girl. <laughs> I do do magic loop or the little nine inch circular if I have to, but my preferred is definitely DPNs and I'm really liking these little short ones. For, um, I think, I'm pretty sure these are five inch. Let me see, I've got a, can tell you for sure because now that I'm saying that these are five inch um I think there might even be shorter ones but I don't think I would go any shorter than this yeah that's five my little measuring one inch 
There we go. Five inches. Because, yeah, now that I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking that maybe there might even be little short four-inch ones. Those ones might be too small, might be too short. I think I, that would make me concerned that I might lose stitches off my needle. But the five inch I'm finding are the perfect length. I'm not, because I'm, I'm using four of them, five of them. So I have stitches on four, four needles. So my work looks like it's in a, a square. So four stitches are holding four needles are holding my stitches <laughs> that's what i wanted to say and needle number five is my working needle and with the stitches divided onto the four needles as you can see there's nothing anywhere close to falling off the tips of those needles i've got 64 stitches on here so even if i was doing a 72 inch sock nothing is going to fall off the tips of those needles if i was using a four inch needle maybe we'd still be okay. But anyways, I think I like this length. It's not too long. It's not too short. And I feel like I can very comfortably knit around on this sock. I really like this. And I think having the right needles makes a huge difference in how often you pick up your work. I have another sock that I started, hmm, I think it was probably way back in January, some of my Croy sock yarn, and it is on a little nine inch circular, and I really don't like knitting on it. The last time I was knitting on it, I started to get a little bit of wrist problems, and I was blaming it on that little nine inch circular. I did pick it up and do just about two rounds on it, but I found uh, it just really awkward and not really enjoyable, which is exactly why it has been sitting in that project bag and not been worked on. This I like because I like I like working on these little DPNs. So the right right tools, the right needles for your project, I think really does play a big part on how often you pick it up and work on it. What else can I show you? I have got, okay, I'll go with this one first. This is my orange yarn that I started that asymmetrical shawl a few weeks ago. And I was working away on that big, well, not big, but super big. I mean, just a regular size ball of yarn, sock yarn. I think it was, what did I say, 380 meters, I think was on it, or 425 yards. I am down to just this little teeny tiny little bit of a ball. I've got good, a good sized start to my shawl here. I'll show you this is, there's the width of it so far. I haven't actually measured it because I do know I want to make it a little bit bigger, but I also know that I don't have enough orange. So what I'm gonna do is get some more green. I bought more green sock yarn when I was in Norway wasn't the pickles yarn, but I, so I'm going to have to just combine another color with it. I don't think I'm going to do another whole ball, but maybe half a ball. Oh, I still have this wrapped around there. Have I? There. So this is, I'll show you the whole, if I can reach, there you go. So you can see the eyelets down the one side here. So see this this one ball it did go quite far but anyways I just did started at a point with that the point three or five stitches and every other row I'm knitting the edge stitch doing a yarn over and knitting to the end I turn it around and knit all the way back so increasing every other row with just a pretty little yarn over now I'm gonna find green and I want to do like a color block section of green across the top to finish the shawl off. And I have um, a stitch pattern that I wanna to use to join the two colors. I'm not sure what the stitch pattern name is, but it's an open, I wanna say an open work stitch pattern. It's not actually lace, but it does give you like a center eyelet kind of thing in the center of the stitch. So I just need to, find that stitch pattern and then I'm going to use this last little bit of orange and start the green and have that kind of open work lacy work detail where I'm going to join the two colors.
That is the plan for this show. Now, which I'm kind of sad that my orange pickles yarn is almost gone because I love that yarn. Now, I was telling somebody else about it because it is so light and fluffy. Like, it's like, I imagine it would be like what's holding a cloud would be like because it is really light and airy. And somebody mentioned they wondered if it would be woolen spun because most of our worsted weight yarn is worsted spun. Now, I don't know that much about spinning. I just know it's how it's plot, like an S twist and a Z twist and one goes one way, one goes the other. And so woolen is different than the way most of our yarns are spun. And this knitter was saying that that's what gives it extra loftiness and the lightness. So I don't know. And may, maybe that is the case with that yarn, but I don't know, whatever it is, I really like it. And I will probably, when I work through my stash enough, or I don't know, my birthday, Christmas, I don't know, whenever I want to treat myself, I think I will definitely be seeing if they do online ordering. Or maybe I'll get Asa, one of my friends in Norway, to pick me up a couple balls and I'll have her mail it to me. But I think I will definitely be knitting with more of this yarn because oh, I really, really like it. Okay, sock, shawl. I have one more shawl I've been working on. I actually have another. I did finish something, but I'm not going to show it to you this week. I am going to make you wait until the end of April, and I will show that on my New Start Friday video, which is the Friday, last Friday of the month. This yarn. This was a New Start Monday from two weeks ago, which I did not start the week I was supposed to. I pulled it out. I had good intentions of starting it. And I don't know, I think I scared myself when I was doing the video and I was showing you and saying that it's black, it's boucle, and it's lace weight. What was I thinking? And a few of you in the comments did agree with me that I was crazy to have bought this. It was just that allure of alpaca, that softness of alpaca that made all reason go out of my head and buy black lace weight boucle. <laughs> it is soft it is really soft you guys so I did cake it up but I am taking it from the outside normally when you cake up yarn you have got you end up with a center pole ball I'm not going to knit from the center of this because as you know you get the center knit up the outside of the ball gets really loose and it kind of collapses on itself and I don't want that this time because this is so fine and I don't want these little boucle little bits sticking to one another and I don't want to end up with a tangled mess so I'm going to leave the center solid and I'm just going to knit from the outside of the ball I cast on I grabbed a six and a half millimeter needle and I cast on 90 stitches so look at this. Look at how light and lacy that looks. And it feels nice. Now, the, the, see this magic of alpaca is, it's getting me once again because I'm feeling this and it's like, ooh, this is really nice. Now I know why I, gra I bought this. <laughs> it feels fantastic. It feels soft and light and drapey. But these stitches are teeny tiny, you guys. So what I've done in order to try to keep 90 stitches on here, this is going to be a slow knit. I've done four or five rows on here. And you have to look at every stitch. And I'm counting. So it is just garter stitch. No shaping, just a big garter stitch rectangle. So you may be wondering, why do I have stitch markers on here? This is to try to keep track of my stitches and hopefully I don't drop any. I put a stitch marker every 15 stitches. So I can go across and I'm going to actually count 15, get to my marker. I'm going to count another 15 and get to my marker. And already just in these few rows, I have had once or twice, I have got almost to the end and then I come to something which I think is a stitch. Can you see how fine that is? 
And I questioned myself as to, ooh, is that actually that little itty bit there? Is that a stitch or has that just been a leftover little bit that's been split from the row before, the stitch before? So this way I can, if I'm not sure, I can count. So if I know I'm supposed to have, I get to 13 and I see two stitches left here, I know that that is an actual stitch, not just a little bit of fluff that's been left over that's been split. And I will actually knit that as a stitch. So we'll see how that goes. That is my plan. So that's why I've got stitch markers across here. Try to keep 15 stitches all the time between there, not drop anything and see how this goes. This is gonna be a slow knit. I'm not expecting to have this one done anytime soon because this is something, it's not like I could see myself sitting down and knitting on this for the whole afternoon. I picked this pretty bag, this pretty yellow bag that my friend Tessa made for me. So this black alpaca is gonna sit in this lovely bright yellow bag. And I'm just gonna pick it up and work two or three rows on it at a time and then set it aside and just go slow and steady. I think the finished project will be worth it. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I promise I'm going to try not to complain too much about knitting with alpaca because I know I did this. Or I, not alpaca, but knitting with the boucle because I know I did it to myself because I bought it. <laughs> um, okay. Sweater knitting. That's what I have to show you next. All right. I have had... I have had fun with this sweater, even though I left it in time out for a good chunk of the week after we visited it last Monday. I told you about my dilemma. This marble yarn, I'll show you the ball. This is ball number two. Last week, I told you that this, see how these colors in here? This has started to stripe. I never thought that this would end up striping in the sweater. My original plan for this sweater was to knit it in the round. There's the whole width of it. Knit it in the round from bottom up, ribbing, work the body up to the armholes. I wanted to divide for the armholes and then I was gonna work back and forth for the front and back and forth for the back. Join the shoulders, pick up stitches around the armholes and knit down. Well, like I said last week, when I found out that this was striping, I thought I can't really change going from the round to back and forth knitting because that is going to change the width of those stripes. So I don't know if you guys ever have this problem, but I was like having a mental tug and war with myself <laughs> because on one hand, I really wanted to knit the sweater in a different construction. My last sweater was knit all in the round and I steaked it for a cardigan and I steak the armholes. I've already done the steaking. So that's why this time I wanted to do separate. Once I got to the armholes, I wanted to separate the front and back and knit them flat. Because I thought I have all the sweater quantity of yarn. I wanna try to do different sweater constructions. I wanna do top down, I wanna do bottom up, I wanna do in the round, I wanna do flat. Um, different sleeve constructions like a drop sleeve, modified drop, raglan, set in, and just kind of get an idea of what I actually like to knit and what I like to wear the best. So I had my heart set because my last sweater, like I said, was already steeped. I wanted to do this one differently. And then when I found that it was striping, I thought, ugh, if I, if I do it the construction way that I want to do it, I'm going to muck up those stripes and I'm probably not going to be very happy with it. So I let it sit in time out until <laughs> I listened to my gut feeling and actually trusted it and thought, you know what, Louise, you need to keep knitting it in the round. And a lot of you left me comments um, on last week's video saying exactly that. Why don't you just do it in the round and steep the armholes? So that is what I'm doing. So thanks for everybody who left me comments because you helped, you know, I knew what I needed to do. I just didn't want to do, I don't know. I guess it's because I had my heart set on knitting it, you know, separating it and doing this one a little different construction. Anyways, it's not going to happen. So I have continued on in the round. I did do 
This is the front side here. So I did put in a bit of bust shaping, like bust darts. I did some short rows. I did about an inch and a half, two inches worth of extra fabric here in the center. I did a little bit of actual body measurements at the bust to see how many extra inches worth of short rows I would need. So it did a little, it was just a little simple math. I figured out my row gauge. I did some measurements to see kind of a front from the shoulder over the widest part of the bust down to the waist and got a measurement. Then I did the same thing at the back, the point of the shoulder down the back to the waist and you compare those two measurements and you see how many inches worth are different from the back to the front. Because for any of you other ladies out there who are large chested, if you knit your sweaters front and back the same size, the same length, the front obviously comes down, has to go over the bust and come down. So what you're taking, that extra fabric that's going around the chest, you're not gonna end up even. You're gonna end up, the front of your sweater is gonna ride up a bit. So to fix that, you can work on the front of your sweater, work some extra short rows. And that is all done and with that math. You take those measurements and the different number from the front and the back. You work at how many extra rows for inches, you figure out your row gauge, do some simple math, figure out how many extra rows you need in there so that the front and the back, even with that extra going around the chest, is gonna lay and sit even at the bottom. So that's what I did. I put in a couple of inches of short rows on the front. So hopefully I'll get a little bit better fit. I've done that. I rejoined it in the round. So because so there I did have to go back and forth for those short rows, but it didn't really affect it. I was also switching balls from ball one to ball two. So I alternated. Um, the two strands from ball one and ball two, but there's, it really, it wasn't enough to really play with the stitch, the striping. So I'm happy with how that worked out. So I joined it in the round. I knit a few rounds, just plain. And then I put in stitch markers to mark where the sleeves, the armholes are going to go. So here's my sweater. I have a stitch marker on one side and there is a stitch marker over here. So what I did, I just divided my stitches in half. I've got 78 stitches on the front, 78 stitches on the back. Where this would be where my side seams are going to be. This is where the armhole is going to start. So when I worked my way around, I got to at, on this row here where I wanted the armholes to start. I worked to here right where my side seam would be if there were, if I was seaming the sweater and I did an increase. I added in one stitch here and I added in one stitch on this side and I put a stitch marker, locking stitch marker on here to mark my steak stitch. So I added in an extra stitch that I will cut and that stitch will be disappeared and then I'll pick up stitches and it sleeves down. So for right now, I'm just working round and round and I will measure from here up to my shoulder. So I'm going to work, oh, I don't know, 11 inches is what I think I'm, I'm going to work on. I only have a few done right now, so I do have to still keep going quite a bit. That 11 inches will take me up to the top of the shoulder, and I'm gonna do, I think I will, I will do just a tiny little bit of shoulder shaping as I'm casting off, and then I will have the body done. Then I will sew up shoulder seams. And we'll talk a little bit more about that next week, about how, how I'm gonna divide, how to figure out how many stitches I'm gonna keep for shoulders, for shoulders and how many we'll keep for a neck opening. And then I will have, I'll be ready to cut, which is always fun. <laughs> always fun to cut your stitches. Um, that's what I'm gonna keep working on. So I've got a few more inches round and round to go. 
I will at some point, I don't know if this will get me to the top. It probably will get close. I don't know if I may have to join bow number three before I get to casting off for the shoulders. We will see. So that's my sweater knitting. So I'm really, I'm really gonna focus on sweater knitting this week because I really want, I really want to get this done. So next week we'll see if I'm on the sleeves. I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna guarantee anything because just about the time I guarantee something, that's when something. Um, never goes to plan. <laughs> so I'm not going to guarantee where I am. Hopefully I have got up to the, I definitely want to have up to the shoulders done. Uh, maybe they'll be joined. Maybe I will cut, I will probably do a video cutting the sleeves. What I'm going to do is do a crochet uh, reinforcement around the outside so I can do a quick video of that and cutting the armholes because I know everybody wants to see that. New starts for this week. I am keeping it really, really simple this week because I really want to focus on sweater knitting. I have got these little bitty part balls of cotton. I think I am just going to really, well, I want to finish off this little bit and just get it done. This is Bernat Handicrafter. This was Poppy. I think this was the colorway Poppy. This is more Bernat Handicrafter, just a little bit of white. And this is Dishy in the conch colorway. So I don't think I will get this ball totally done, but I want to finish up these two little bits. Um, so I think I'll probably work on this little bit and then stripe some orange and white and just see. It'll just be a scrappy dishcloth. It may be, I'm thinking maybe just seed stitch. I was gonna do my super simple dishcloth again, quick and simple, or maybe I'll do some seed stitch, stripe some seed stitch. I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, this week is not really so much about trying a different stitch pattern. It is just trying to get some of these odd bits done. So that's gonna be first new start. Second new start, again, is going to be something simple because I do have all of these big projects, all the, the shawls and socks and things. So I do need to get something, start something small so I can get it finished. These two balls of yarn, they're both part balls. Not, I think a cowl. I think I knit a cowl out of this, probably last winter. So I'm gonna work on these two bits and try to knit up as much as I can into a hat. A hat and maybe fingerless mitts if I, I don't, we'll see. There's way, more, there's more here than I'll need for a hat, but um, we'll see how, see how much of it, it works up into a hat and then I'll go from there. Maybe fingerless mitts just to use up the last little bits. So I've got it started. This is worsted weight yarn. It's Patton's Classic Wool. I'm not sure what the colorway is because there's no ball bands on here. And this is from my stash from a long years ago. So I'm sure that this colorway is probably discontinued, but it's kind of got a rusty color, a pink and an orange. It is quite pretty. I'm not sure how, it's kind of looking like it's pooling here on the hat, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna knit it up and it will just be however it ends up being. Four millimeter circular needle. I've put on, I think, 88 stitches right now. I'm just working knit two, purl two. There, I'm just gonna turn it around so you can see <laughs> because we've got orange and red and now we've got pink and so, yeah, we'll see how this is gonna turn out. I'm gonna do two by two ribbing for a, a, a good long while because I think I've got this yarn I want to use up as much as I can, so I think I'm going to make a really long berm on here that can be folded up for extra warmth. And then I will increase some extra stitches, and then I'll just switch into plain stockinette stitch and just knit round and round and round. Do some simple, simple decreasing on top. Make a pom-pom. I can make a pom-pom because -pom I'll have extra yarn left over, won't I? I'll make a pom-pom. Add a pom-pom on here. So I will have two finishes next week because I will have a dishcloth and I will have this hat done. 
in no time. So that is what I've got going on for this week. A hat. I'm going to be, I'm, ex I'm excited about this. I'm going to, this will be, this will mark, see, I shouldn't do this. I'm going to, I'm going to jinx myself if I say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. This will mark the first week that I will have got both projects finished. If I get a dishcloth and I get this hat done. There, that's my goal for next week. So, but don't really hold me to it because <laughs> life always seems to have a way of getting in the way. Just when I think I have a set plan that I can stick to, doesn't need seem to matter how simple it can be, something always seems to come up. But I'm really going to try this um, to get this finished because it's just knit two, purl two. So I can do this. I seem to be on a little bit of a kick watching Grey's Anatomy right now. So this will be good binge watching, just sit and work ribbing and then switch to stockinette. So wish me luck that I can get two finishes done. Because um, I know, again, people have left me comments and they're saying, Louise, you always start such big projects. You need to start something small. So I am taking your advice and starting a hat as well as a dishcloth. So Fingers crossed, maybe I'll have two finishes next Monday to show you. And hopefully some decent progress on my sweater. And we can talk a little bit more about steaking next week and how you decide, like I said, for the neck and the shoulders. I'll be able to wear this sweater pretty soon. Maybe one of these times I'll, I'll start off the video wearing my blue sweater. That is something exciting to look forward to. All right, well, I hope everybody had a fantastic knitting week last weekend. And we've just, today is Easter Monday. So I hope everybody did have a fantastic Easter weekend celebrating just at home with your immediate family and had a nice, enjoyable long weekend. And I hope you had some extra time to knit as well. So I hope this upcoming week you have another fantastic week and are able to squeeze in as much knitting time as you can. So, and please leave me some messages in the comments because I do love chatting with everybody. I love seeing the comments come in and all of your suggestions and tips, some um, dishcloth patterns I could knit or suggestions on, you know, anything that I'm questioning about sweater knitting or Anything, knitting with boucle, if you have any tips on that, I would love to hear them because I am open to any and all suggestions. So until next week, everybody, if you um, don't want to miss any one of these videos, you can hit that subscribe and the thumbs up to like this video. And then that way more people will get to see it. So have a fantastic week and I will see you right back here next Monday for another New Start Monday video. Have a great week, everybody. Bye for now.